Hi everyone, thank you for tuning back into another episode of Centric Talks Property. Uh, today we're joined by Chris Keogh, uh, one of the main men at Court Collaboration, development director these days, I think. Yep. Um, Court Collaboration, really excited to, to, to have you in the room, Chris, because you guys have been an incredibly busy uh, construction firm over the last few years. So tell us a little bit about yourself and about Court. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Andy. Thanks for having me. Um, right. good, good to be here and, and have a chat with you. Um, so yeah, look, I'm uh, Director of uh, Development at Court Collaboration. We're a SME, um, Resi developer, uh, yeah. based on Colmore Row, born and, and bred out of Birmingham. Yeah. Um, I've been with the company uh, for coming on eight years this year. Um, we've been around for, for 10 years in total. And, you know, we've we've evolved over the last um, eight, yeah. 10 years uh, from doing smaller more niche projects over in Sutton Coalfield where we you know we start off refurbishing um, the local council house yeah um, and did the 18 apartments there to what everyone's seeing in the press these days of yeah. uh, 51 story 667 unit yeah, um, yeah. So it's skyscrapers so we, we've evolved quite a lot over the years but it's um, but it's been fun and you know we're excited for what the next um, yeah you know, I mean, five to ten years we, we've are. obviously been close to you guys ever since you know being on Colmore Row ourselves um, for a long time and to see you guys grow and the, the 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 rapid growth almost and the projects you've worked on and the projects that are in your pipeline now yeah. um, are pretty exciting so yeah really really excited to have you on board so um so give us a little bit I suppose about last year 2020 the pandemic I know everybody's talked about it we're in 2021 now uh, the injections are flying through, so yeah. fingers crossed we're, we're coming to the end of it. But what were the what were the challenges and the pitfalls and the maybe some of the successes that you you know you've come away from twenty twenty with? Yeah, absolutely. Look, without labouring the the COVID the point, point too yeah. much, because I think you know ev- we're going to ban that word. I think. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a good idea. Bad enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, it's you, you can't ignore the impact of COVID. Look, of it it um, it affected everybody. Um, you know, it's a bloody pandemic. You know, it sure. affected everybody, um, but it's. I, I, I think it will have some changes to mm. the way that we, we live, but I, I think there has been a lot of knee-jerk reaction um, yeah. to it. And, you know, initially everyone the office is dead, the city centre is dead. Rubbish. Yeah. Absolute rubbish. Um, and I think we're starting to see that now there is confidence coming back. Once this lockdown ends, you know, people will be mer- working their way back into the city. The, uh, the vaccines and all that kind of good stuff will give people the confidence. Yeah. And people still want to live in city centres. I was going to say, I think city living is here to stay. You know, 100%. 10 years ago, maybe not. But no, we're, we've evolved into a very sort of European culture almost. And yeah, I yeah, think I, I, city centre living is here to stay. 100%. And it's, um, it's not just about office space and it's not just... Um, about um, you know clothes shopping and that kind of thing. Mm. The F and B offering that we've got in Birmingham is you know it's the best outside of um, outside of London. You know yeah. the amount of Michelin stars that we've got. People want to live in the city centre so they can be close to these nice restaurants, these nice bars. You know, it's a lifestyle choice. It's a lifestyle choice. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. And you know it's been a been a tough year for the hospitality industry. Mm-hmm. It will come back. There'll be huge changes within it, but it will come back. Yeah. Um, so. Look, Hopefully you don't have to continue um, dining with plastic oh, divides between us for It'd be so, nice. Long, it'd be so yeah. nice, wouldn't it? A bit of normality. Yeah. Go to the pub, you know, what would yeah. it be like to, to stand at a crowded bar again, yeah. waiting Get for a beer? Get back into <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but, you know, in terms of, uh, it has created issues, as I was saying. Look, there's, um, we deal with a lot of um, large institutional funds mm-hmm. um, and, um, you know, the development capital coming into the city has been nervous over the last 12 months yeah. it's waiting to see um what the overall impact of of covid was going to be during the course of last year it absolutely slowed down there was there was really no end in sight there was lockdown and then oh we're coming out of lockdown no 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 here's a second wave Back again yeah now we've got vac- uh, a vaccine which is rolling out really quickly there's light at the end of the tunnel mm. we're starting to see that you know the sentiment warm up a little bit a bit of energy um, pick back up exactly yeah. right which is which is great but that's kind of the the negative, but for us, the, the negative was it just slowed down for 12 months, which yeah. is, you know, um, a little bit of treading water from a funding pers- perspective. Uh-huh. But on the other side of the coin, you know, we it was a very successful year for us. Hmm. Um, we've got the Axiom and Arden Gate developments. Yeah. Um, Arden Gate's now um, practically complete. We completed that during the course of lockdown. We sold 95% of the 225 units there. Yeah. 
with the Axiom, um, we completed on two of the three blocks with the third block due to practically complete this Friday. Right. Um, and that's yeah, 304 units there. Surprised you sat here then. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Friday's a big day. Friday is yeah. a big day. Yeah. We'll have a very, very pleased client once, once that's done. So, um, but again, that's, that's probably 75% sold by practical completion. Yeah. Um, we've then secured planning for um, the Stoneyard scheme, which mm-hmm. is on the site of the former Boring Trading Estate, 900. Yeah, talk to us about your two big schemes that, again, a lot of the press has been has been talking about in the buzz of the city. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's 995 resi units, wow. about 30,000 square feet of commercial space as well. Um, Irish Community Centre, um, looking, and, you know, we were engaging with the Irish community on this because we want to you know they're, they're key stakeholders in the area of course it was you know um digbeth grew off the back of the and irish i suppose community. you're taking the main focal point the irish center away so yeah, yeah exactly what right was, and what were the challenges around that um look we we know they're a big stakeholder in there and yeah. uh anthony mccourt um the owner of court collaboration founder he's from uh he's from northern ireland yeah with a surname like Kyo. i can't get away <laughs> with saying i'm not irish um yeah. you know so um, and then, you know, Lindsay Davis, who works in, in our office as well, she's Irish. There's a big Irish right, connection okay. within our business. Yeah. Um, so it, it's right and proper to engage with the stakeholders wherever you're developing. Of course. Um, and, you know, whether there was any love lost between the the Irish Association and the Irish community and the former owners of the Irish Centre, mm. um, you know, it, it is, is irrelevant really because we want to bring them back into the fore. Yeah. Um, and... We had the opportunity whilst we're delivering um, the stone yard and the amount of community sp- um, community and communal and um, sort of commercial space that we're putting in there yeah. to relocate a facility from them out of the small existing Irish centre, okay. move them into a self-contained unit over there and also allow us to develop the Irish centre itself. Yeah. So it, it worked really well. There's still, still a bit of a way to go on it. We're, we're, in, we're in discussions with um, speaking to them again tomorrow morning just to yeah. make sure that they're getting as much out of this as they you know we can possibly give them yes of course. Um, which is really really important um i think like you said wherever you go and develop you need the local communities buying and and you know understanding almost because there's gonna be a lot of disruption for them and like you say relocating etc so yeah exactly right getting and the, the buying of the, of the locals is is key to any successful development exactly and you know we've been discussing with south and uh, spit my words up <laughs> south and city college yeah um who are directly opposite the site as well okay um you know they, they've got quite a lot of um you know construction um and sort of manual labor type um education that they do right and of course that's been directly opposite you Can know you we've tie been into that trying to tie into that yeah. apprenticeships or um jobs that kind of thing Brilliant. how can we help engage yes. with the local communities Give best back possible a little. <laughs> yeah. exactly right yeah exactly don't right. be the greedy developer <laughs> no exactly we're you know developers yeah. always seems like a dirty word but you know yeah we you know we want to give back it's something that we've always tried to do as a business yeah um you know it's so so important to us so we're, we're, we're working with the irish community um yeah. but yeah so Brilliant. we've got the stone yard there and then also the most recent one which was consented yeah. on 7th of january yeah 48 that. story tower 454 so i think um, we'll be the it's... tallest tower block in the city um Third, actually. Okay. Third. Um, the... You're going to have to put a few more stories on then. Uh, Come on, Chris. <laughs> no, no more on that one. No way. No. But um, the currently the tallest one is the 60 stories up uh, top of Broad Street. Yes. Um, then, you know, we've got our 51 story tower at one east side as well, which, yeah. um, like, of course, it's, it's publicised that we've had our challenges on that from a yeah. judicial review point of view course that was that was quashed um and now we you know we're looking to to get a new consent on that but sticking at the, our, our 51 stories and then third would be uh, our yeah. center at 48 stories okay and one of the challenges i mean as a city we've never until recently really been going for these these skyscrapers as we're, we're calling them what yeah. are the challenges and why have developers steered away from them in the past um the challenge fundamentally has been um the marriage, as always, it is between mm. exit value and delivery cost, build cost. Uh, yeah. yeah, but the challenge is even greater when you're building tall. Yeah, you know your build cost goes up quite substantially, um, particularly you know when you're starting to touch the sky. 
Uh, Skyrockets. <laughs> exactly. It, it does go through the roof. Yeah. But the confidence that is in Birmingham at the moment from funds and from purchasers, mm. um, which is driving... I say um, the marriage is almost there. It's the right, the marriage is the right getting sweet there. spot. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're seeing um, yields contracting on the investment, um, investment pieces for built to rent, mm-hmm. um, which is giving you that higher exit value, which is making it more viable. This whole viability thing is... Is it's always a challenge, yeah. Um, but you know the fundamentals of Birmingham with with HS2, the infrastructure, the desire of the city. You've seen recently they they relaunched the big city plan, yes, and that's got a heap of um, skyscrapers and various other things in yeah. it. There is the ambition within the city, yes. Um, Helps when the planners are on board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And do you know what the planners yeah. have been really helpful? They yes. want to see it. You know, they they want to see the city driven forwards. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it's not the people people developers it's not that we don't want to do it mm. we do but they're getting that balance and trade-off of what is viable and what's yeah. not and that you, you've got to draw a line somewhere because you can't just jump from 15 stories being classed as a tall building yeah to, to 51 yeah. and 60 <laughs> overnight yeah. yeah you know we've seen the bank on broad street at 22 and mm-hmm. 33 stories yeah. you know I mean, and currently that looks like it towers over everything else. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it does. You, you can see it from miles around and yeah. it does. Uh, it sticks out. Yeah, like driving in every from... morning I can see it. Whatever colour it's lit up as. Yeah, exactly. Apart from when the fog's over the top of it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it does stand out. So it'd be, be interesting to see buildings start. You've got Moda opposite there as well now, which is 30 or 33 stories, For, I think. 42. 42, 42 yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. just in that area, you know, you're, you're jumping up at 10 storey increments there. Yeah. But, you, you know, that viability is definitely there the desire is there to do it and the construction expertise in the regions yes. is coming as well yeah um you know historically with us only being up to sort of 15 odd stories anything above that there there was an expertise specifically in the midlands to be able to deliver yeah. it. so you're then using special projects teams coming out of london mm-hmm. who are used to london pricing driving your build costs yeah. driving up the bill costs so it's <laughs> yeah. just not achievable but now that there's that design, now that, you know, bringing Manchester into the equation is it always usually of course, happens, yeah. you know, that expertise is coming up from London, mm-hmm. it's coming down from Manchester. Construction companies know how to deliver at height now. Yeah. Um, and so you're seeing that build cost. I suppose come it's down. a totally different logistical challenge of, of getting materials up and, you know, and the actual build um, process. Yeah, which it is. Which is why costs are seen to. It, it is absolutely, you know, yeah. um, the the structural challenges that come with that, you know, the M and E challenges of you know getting pumping water to the fifty first floor. Of course, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, how do you do that? Do, you've got to you know install mid level, um, you know, halfway up the building. You've yeah. got to have extra plant room in there, which costs more money, which you wouldn't have to have if you were eight, ten, fifteen stories. Yeah. So there, there are a number of challenges which come with it, but um, you know the professionals within Birmingham. Um, and the the construction industry within the Midlands are really getting to grips with that, and you know driving yeah, yeah. driving costs towards a viable Brilliant. point. Brilliant, exciting times then. Yeah. And talk to us briefly. I mean, we were talking just before we started recording this about your wind challenge down on the Irish Centre. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, another one. These are things that, like I say, end users will never understand or, or or take into consideration that you you guys have had to go through this to to you know to develop the scheme. Yeah, absolutely right. Look, when you're when you're building at heights, you you're impacted by any prevailing wind that's yeah. coming through. And um, you know, without getting too, far too technical on it, number one because I'm not technical, but you know, <laughs> I've spent a hell of a long time in wind tunnels over yeah. the last year uh, trying to understand it. Is you know, the, the wind hits the building, it comes down um, and comes down at speed, right? And it can be dangerous. Yeah, um, you know, it can blow people off their feet. Um, there've been incidences around the country of people being knocked over and unfortunately killed um, wow. as, a, as a result, leads in particular. Um, so you've got to pay a lot of attention to, to wind. And the Irish Centre is the, the biggest case in point here is we spent probably 15 days last year in Imperial College London's wind tunnel um, at quite a pretty penny per day. Yeah, can imagine. Um, <laughs> to, to get to grips with it because you'll see that the, the tower's got quite a unique leaf shape and yeah. it's got sham, um, sort of rounded, rounded corners, and that is to slow, um, slow the wind and let it just run through yeah. and around the building rather than hitting it, being a block, dropping straight yeah. down, yeah, yeah, and knocking people off their feet. It's an absolute challenge. You couldn't just fix it. 
um, mm. through that design. So you're using a, a model, I assume, in a wind tunnel. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah you chuck oh, a model okay. in there. You know, it's, it is a little bit um, blue piece. You know, there, yeah. there is a chap that sits there um, building little trees out of um, <laughs> matchsticks. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's little wire brushes yeah. and stuff, a true yeah. blue, pe- blue Peter style. Brilliant. Um, but that then reflects into the scheme that we've got. So we've got the tower and we've got um, uh, a bunch of, of trees mm. um, around the building to, to mitigate that Just wind. It soften the wind. It does. It softens yeah. the wind. It makes it perfectly safe um, mm. around there. It makes it perfectly comfortable as well. So it's not like you're walking down there thinking, oh, Christ, this is yeah. a bit of a stiff breeze. Yeah. It's perfectly comfortable. I mean, you notice around. it at times, you know, over yeah. um, by the cube in the mailbox, you know, you walk through there and it becomes a real wind tunnel. It really pushes through. Yeah. Um, at our Nottingham office, it's the same. There's two quite tall buildings and literally outside the office, no matter what the wind speed feels like elsewhere, it really feels like a wind tunnel. So you'd be surprised, I think, people would be surprised of the... The, the the stuff you have to go through now if you're going to build at height for those kind of absolutely um, there, there are a lot reasons, more challenges yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so yeah there's there, there's wind you know you've got to look at aerodrome yeah um aerodrome safeguarding as well so for example at one east side 51 stories mm. um that impacted upon um category d um aircraft right. um and their flight procedures wow you know who, who would have thought of that you yeah know? so yeah. we had to engage with um Birmingham Airport, um, who then engaged with the Civil Aviation Authority to raise um, circling minima levels yeah. so that um, you know planes have got to go at a, a higher height than they would have done normally. Who, who would have thought you'd, yeah. that's something that we would need to consider? You're building, <laughs> having on uh, exactly businesses right. and infrastructure and yeah. Yeah. transport around, yeah. But we've, we've overcome them, which is the most yeah. important thing. They're, they're, they're challenges that were that were risen. Um, great learning curve for, for us and for mm-hmm. um you know the the wider team, yeah. so uh, and for the city itself, you yeah, know, showing that the, these products can be be delivered. Yeah. Okay. Um. Obviously, coming out at the back of COVID, it's the last time we'll talk about it. I'm <laughs> sure. Um. We've noticed a bit of trend in terms of consumer criteria, almost. Yeah. What are you guys seeing? What are you doing to to overcome that moving forward? Yeah. So COVID actually, and and the changes coupling with the city's desire, and you know the general international desire to deal with. Uh, but to be more sustainable, yeah. Um, and part of that sustainability is having uh, more open space um, external to apartments, definitely. But also then, how how does that then interrelate to how you live and live and breathe in an apartment? What we've seen from from COVID is that you do need more space. Yes. You know, if you're going to be locked up for three months and then and Please let that be the only time in my life that this happens. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right? yeah. But it shows that you do need some kind of external space um, for, for 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 well-being. Everybody's well-being. Yeah. You know, um, the link between um, open space and mental health is, mm-hmm. you know, the it's evidence been is exaggerated clear. now as well. Yeah, I think. absolutely, yeah. and it's really highlighted it. Um, always been an issue, but really highlighted. So, what we're seeing now is the need for that more significant. Um, public space at sort mm-hmm. of ground floor level or private space but open space that yeah, um, you, you can engage in now built to rent has always been about creating communities yes um and in our opinion you don't create communities by providing open space on balconies yeah you know that's just it's within your own demise exactly no, it's encouraging yeah. someone to stay within their apartment yeah so we're looking at, at different ways how do you how do you provide that communal space um but is also kind of semi-external. So we are looking at doing sort of partway up a building, an entire floor. That's I spoke earlier on about plant floor. Yeah. Um, so you can have half a plant floor and the rest of that floor dedicated to sort of internal sort winter of gardens with a wider ba- uh, yeah. balconies, um, resident space, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So those are the real sort of design change that we're seeing. I'm, I'm not suggesting perhaps that, you know, every apartment will now have an extra room that is dedicated to being a study (laughs) yeah Yeah? i'm not sure that's the way forwards but do we and we're we're doing this on our um, new garden square scheme on uh, on the hagley road yes it's a business center Mm -hmm. you know you can go in there and you you've got a fob which is maybe that's the one that you use to to enter your apartment um, or whatever and there's printing facilities scanning facilities that kind of thing there's Mm -hmm. a there's a working hub you can go down there you can detach yourself from your apartment yeah you can have that i think that's the big thing for me is people are working from home now and we had a quick chat about it before again Mm. and you know it's not for everybody you know i like to get up 
put some work clothes on <laughs> and, yeah. and get out of the house. So actually, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a garden and stuff where I could work in the garden if I wanted to. But people in apartments, I think, even if you put that study room that we were just talking about in the apartment, they're going to feel like they never leave those four walls. So actually by having a public space or communal space that's breakout and has all the facilities, so, you know, you don't need your own scanner and printer and yeah. you don't need your own super duper Wi-Fi in your apartment, it, it's down in the business centre, I think yeah. is is that nice mix and we'll get people out of their apartments yeah. um, and we don't all just become hobbits that live in our, no. <laughs> in our, uh, in our rooms no, forever. It, yeah, exactly right. And like I said, it's, it's that it's that mental health piece. It's so so easy at the at the moment when you're, particularly if you're living in a, in a smaller property, mm. um, to quite literally wake up in the morning, roll over, pick up your laptop <laughs> and because you've not got a fat lot else to do, you stay can, under the quilts, but log like, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can you can stay on it until you fall asleep at night, yeah. and you're just working. Mm. And people talk about the the work life balance. Some people, you know, working every hour that God sends that yeah. works for them. Yeah. Um, but I think for for the vast majority of people, mm. that's not really the way that people they send the working longer now because there's no commute. So they're logging on at eight half seven when they'd usually leave. Yeah. You know, there's no commute home where you'd usually clock off at five half five. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll I'll stick through till six. So actually, people are working longer than they were before. Absolutely, but I still think that you're you're, you're getting that longer part of the day because there is no commute. Mm. But I don't think that means that outside those normal hours when you sh- when you're commuting. Yeah. Do you want to then be just sat there? Oh, I've got nothing else to do. There's some absolute drivel on the TV. Yeah. You know, I'm watching some dreadful reality stuff. I'll just have a Stick bang out Netflix the email. On. It's yeah. productive, <laughs> of course. It's productive. Yeah. But from a, I don't think a it's mental good health long perspective, term, long term, if you're doing yeah. that for three months or four months, it's not right. So giving people that detachment. People are going to forget how to shake hands and communicate and oh, good body language. And, absolutely. Well, yeah. you know, earlier on, you went in with an elbow, <laughs> yeah. I went in with a fist. Yeah. What, what's that kind of the new rules? I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what um, communication is like after this period, I suppose. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Okay, brilliant. Um, we are a property company. Yep. Last question, quick fire. Yep. Describe as your dream home. If you're not living in it already. <laughs> well, you know, as you know, we've just moved house yeah. and we we were only passively looking beforehand and this one came as on you the market. Do. Yeah, exactly. well, I'm still on right move now. I've yeah. been in there for two months. I'm it's still having a look yeah. at other stuff. But um, no, my, my dream home, um, bit of character. Um, you know, we, we've got a sort of arts and craft um, yeah. type place. I love a bit of character. Um, nice cornice in, you know, nice rows in the room. Yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. Um, You're a traditionalist. Very much a traditionalist. Yeah. <laughs> like a like a decent sized garden. Very pri- privileged to have grown up with a decent sized garden. Yeah, so I love that. Yeah. And and a drive as well. But that comes off, you know, we, we've only got one car, but it comes off um, living somewhere where you didn't have your own drive. Of course. And yeah. you don't want to be walking to your front yeah, door in the freezing been there. cold. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> Especially on a day like today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, no, it's, yeah, nice space. Somewhere where you can breathe a little bit not yeah, feel a little yeah. bit um and work from up. home occasionally and work from home occasionally <laughs> indeed okay brilliant well thank you very much chris for joining us it's been a pleasure no, no problem um, at all. wish you guys all the success with those new schemes they sound really exciting so thank you very much. hopefully we can uh, we can see those popping out the ground pretty soon so thank you very much everyone for joining us and listening again um feel free to drop us any likes comments and shares please um but again as always take care and see you soon he did it all for me <laughs> Pro, good stuff. There we go. Ended up more of a discussion about mental health, but that, ah, that always go happens. off topic. I love yeah. it. <laughs>